What's up folks? Welcome back to another video. In this one, we are talking about rocket lofting. Is it effective and how do you do it? More specifically, with regards to the Su-25, S-8 and S-13 rockets, uh, how do we do it scientifically and get an accurate hit? So, if you want to find out, stick around. Two minutes inside, you're clear to disconnect the headset. We'll see you on the left with the pin. Thanks a lot. So since I've initially started seeing rocket lofting done by both the Russian and the Ukrainian side in the Ukrainian conflict, I immediately thought it was an absolute waste of time. Firing rockets up into the air and uh, quite, I mean, how, how could it be accurate, right? Well, since then I've done some experimenting and I've actually worked out the physics and some of the ballistics behind it. I had a look at some videos and saw the sort of speeds and angles uh, that they are um, lofting these rockets at. And I decided to recreate that in DCS just out of pure curiosity, just to see if it actually was possible to even remotely hit something. You'll be amazed to find out that actually this tactic is nowhere near as useless as I once thought. After analyzing some of the videos by both the Ukrainians and the Russians, I realized that the majority of their rocket lofts are done at 10 degrees pitch attitude and about 750 kph. Now, with the S8 rocket pod, the ballistics work out such that if you launch at those parameters at 9 kilometers, or rather you initiate your pitch up at 9 kilometers, you are probably going to end up in the ballpark of your target. With the S13 bigger caliber rocket, you have to start your pitch up maneuver at about 13 kilometers. But if you nail those parameters with negligible wind, you are most certainly going to get the trajectory of the rocket such that at least some of your rockets will most certainly land on your target, which is actually quite amazing when you think about it, that you're launching rockets from nine kilometers away and they are landing uh, where you want them to, uh, broadly speaking. Now, obviously, in terms of azimuth, a little degree, a degree change left and right does create a much bigger variation, so you cannot aim for any small targets. As you can probably tell, I've created something what looks like a front line that is probably reminiscent of that that could be seen in real life, with the only difference being that I don't have any friendly units, although you could probably imagine where they should be roughly. Uh, and that is literally just to save some CPU performance for the computer. The target in our case is a relatively large storage facility with a bunch of tanks and vehicles, uh, as you could probably tell there, that's being protected by a Panzer S1 and a whole bunch of other SAMs in other places and locations, which unfortunately don't show the threat rings uh, in TAC view. But rest assured that if we weren't flying, low level we would be getting shot out of the sky uh, very quickly which is why rocket lofting is if an effective way of staying alive yourself however it must be noted that the amount of collateral damage that can be caused as a result of rocket lofting is absolutely enormous oh it's looking promising oh nice oh, it's funny because i think all right did you get any bdas there we hit something a truck at least uh ai camas truck I got my friend Muzz to help me out here with some formation rocket lofting just to demonstrate the effectiveness of having two aircraft and having a larger area uh, to cover during the attack and it does make it considerably more effective, uh, it must be said. Oh, it's on track, it's on track, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, just oh, yeah. hit. Hit. slightly I off to the right now, sorry, to the left. So the purpose of this video was really just to demonstrate whether or not rocket lofting can be an effective way of prosecuting targets beyond the contact line in a highly contested airspace such as that seen in the skies of Ukraine. And the answer I believe is yes, provided there is a large enough concentration of troops or your target is big enough, then absolutely it can be provided you have enough rocket lofting attacks. Inevitably you will hit it, but unfortunately the amount of collateral damage that this tactic causes is also enormous. So it's really unfortunate that it needs to be used in real life and it's also extremely unfortunate that humanity feels the need to kill itself in this day and age and I believe that all wars should really only ever be fought in the skies of DCS. So I'll really keep my fingers crossed that all conflicts come to an end soon 
And with that relatively sad note, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I say, this was purely to just demonstrate whether the tactic works or not. If you have any comments, please comment down below. Let me know. And if there's any other particular tactics uh, that you would like to see when it comes to close air support, then please let me know as well. But with that said, I hope you all have a very, very happy new year. And I look forward to bringing you some new exciting content in 2024. Adios.